Goethe-Hess has gone down in history as the great German hero, but was he? It turns out that the Battle of Teutoburg Forest made him look more like a villain. Two thousand years ago, deep in the German forest, the mighty Roman Empire suffered a crushing defeat. The general, Publius Quinctilius Varus, is ambushed together with three entire legions under his command. In the rout, 15,000 Romans are killed. Leading the attack is the Germanic chieftain Arminius, later known in Germany as Hermann. The Battle of the Teutoburg Forest is a key moment in the history of Central Europe, even if battle isn't the right word. It wasn't a battle. It was a raid on a marching column that was several kilometers long. This was no frontal assault. The attack came from the side. Arminius became a German legend, immortalized by the Hermann's Denkmal Memorial. And yet we can't even be sure of his name. In Latin, he would have been called Harimanus, not Arminius. Equating Hermann with Arminius, as propagated by Martin Luther, is historically false. So, in fact, we don't know what he was really called. Three new exhibitions try to illuminate what we do know about the battle. Their epic titles, Empire, Myth and Conflict, reflect the significance of this momentous event. Starting at the small town of Halton am See, a Roman staging post at the time of the battle, here the show explores the Roman side of the story and pieces together a portrait of General Varus himself. In Detmold, the myth exhibition looks at the man who defeated him, Arminius. And in Kalkrise, near Osnabrück, the conflict exhibition marks what's believed to be the scene of the battle. A wealth of archaeological finds shows this is the spot where Varus and his legions fell victim to Arminius' attack. Man, das Interessanteste... The most interesting finds at Kalkrise are the coins, because you can date them. We know when each Roman coin was minted. And the coins found in Kalkrise only go up to the year 7 or 8 AD. None were any younger. Many questions remain unanswered. What were the coins for? And how did Arminius lure the Roman legions to the scene of the attack? Arminius had been an ally of the Romans and knew General Varus personally. Arminius' great feat, and this is a mystery whether you like it or not, was that he managed to organize this great revolt from within Varus' entourage, or at least very close quarters. They had sat at the same table, they had drunk wine together. And yet Arminius did mount a successful attack. For his one-time Roman allies, it was the act of a traitor. You have to say almost all the great freedom fighters in world history were traitors. William Tell was a traitor, George Washington was a traitor, and Garibaldi and Simon Bolivar. They all started out in the service of the powers they then turned against. What motivated Arminius remains a mystery. Over the centuries, he has been glorified by all and sundry held up as the liberator of the Germanic tribes, a national hero, and even the founding father of the German people. But in the process, historical facts have been overlooked. It's quite simply anachronistic to speak of Germany at that time. The term German only appeared under Charlemagne. On the other hand, you can't deny that the Germanic tribes were our ancestors, and that we speak the same language they spoke in an early form. And there's no denying the impact of Arminius' attack, one that set limits on Rome's expansionary course. It's quite conceivable that the Germanic tribes would have become Romanized. That would have meant the Germanic language would have disappeared, and the German language would never have evolved. And Germany might look very different today had Arminius not mounted his attack. Wherever the Romans ruled, they used up all the wood, so Germany would have lost all its forests. Imagine Central Europe without any forests. Guardian of the forests, savior of the language. 
and a traitor. 2,000 years on, Arminius is no ordinary German hero.